Hello everyone. In our previous lectures, we have discussed this curve. What was this curve called? Yes, this is the dose response curve. In this curve, we plotted log dose against response. And we got this sigmoidal curve in which if we increase the dose, we get increase in response until we reach a plateau at which any increase in the dose, we don't find an increase in response. We reach what we call Emax or the maximum efficacy. And this happens because all the receptors are occupied by our drug. And at half the Emax, if we blotted or extrapolated half the Emax to the x axis, we get the EC50, or this is the dose that elicit half the Emax. Okay? But now there is something we should think about. This type of dose response curve could be applied only when our response could be graded. This could be applied to a response such as a drug that increases blood pressure or decreases blood pressure, a drug that increases heart rate or decreases heart rate. This response could be graded. For example, a dose X of drug could increase heart rate by 20 beats per minute. But if this dose were doubled to 2x, it would increase heart rate by 40 beats per minute. We can measure this response. It is graded. Okay? So this type of dose response curve is called graded dose response curve. Okay? But what if our drug is an hypnotic drug? A drug that induces sleep. The response here is either our patient sleeps or not. There is no grading in the response. Or our drug is, for example, an anticonvulsant drug. So the response here is either there is treatment of the convulsion or not. So our response is all or none. It either happens or not. There is no grading in the response here. So we couldn't apply log dose or plot log dose against response. We had only one response. So how could we draw a response curve or those response curve in such cases. Okay, let's see. We do that by doing small experiment. We, for example, bring 50 experimental enemies. And we divide these 50 animals into five groups. In each group, there are 10 animals. Okay? And in first group, we give X dose of the drug, or dose X. And in group 2, we give 2X. And in group 3, we give 3X, and so on. So we increase the dose from group to another, okay? And in each group, we measure how many animals 
get the response we need. For example, if this is a hypnotic drug, we count in each group how many animals slipped. Okay. So, for example, if in group one, two animals have slipped, so two out of ten. So this is 20% okay and in group 2 in which we have a dose that is more than group 1 we would expect that there would be higher number we got the response we want so we increase the dose from one group to another and we measure the percentage of responders we measure how many of our animals in each group responded to the drug they gave us the response we measure because our response is all or not okay so we draw that curve between log dose and percentage of responders so this curve is between log dose and percentage of responders and again we get the same sigmoidal curve and the maximum here is 100% of responders so this is the dose that elicits the response in all the population or on in all animals in this group so this is the curve of our desired therapeutic effect we want to form our drug okay and if we plotted 50 percent of responder respond, responders and extrapolated it on the x-axis we get what is called ed50 and ed50 is the dose that caused the response in 50 of the population okay so this curve is for the drug that have a specific response that could not be graded it's all or none response so we call that type of curve quantum or all or none those response curve so the types of those response curves are graded those response curve and the quantal or all or none those response curve okay and now we have a question what if we repeated that experiment on different five groups of animals but we increased the dose then the initial dose or the maximum dose we give to animals in previous experiment for example in group number five in experiment one the dose was 100 milligrams and now we start this second experiment from group one by giving more than this 100 milligram so this dose is high and we are expecting to get unwanted effect or adverse effect let's for example assume that the effect or the response we are waiting now is 
the death of the animal so we are giving increasing doses from one group to another and we measure how many animals died so we would get another curve another quantal or, do, or all or none dose response curve shifted to the right because we increase the dose but now this curve is for unwanted adverse effect or it's for a lethal effect we measure how many animal died okay so again here if we extrapolated the 15 percent responders to the x-axis on of the log dose we get the dose that causes half the population to die or to get this unwanted adverse effect and we call that dose TD50 or toxic dose 50 or median lethal dose okay now a question what if what if the difference or the space between ED50 or Z or and the TD50 on the dose response curve is less TD50 is near the ED50 that means that by increasing the dose a little bit we start to get the curve of the unwanted adverse effect so there is a very small difference between the ED50 and the TD50 so we are expecting this drug to be less safe this is this is not the safest drug we want because by increasing the dose then the dose of the therapeutic effect a little bit we get the unwanted adverse effect but when the space between ED50 and the TD50 or, uh, or the difference between them is more so that means that we need a dose that is way larger than ED50 to get unwanted adverse effect so this is a safer drug this drug is safe okay so we want a drug that has a high TD50 or TD50 that is higher than ED50 and we call the difference between ED50 and TD50 the therapeutic index or TI and this is calculated by dividing TD50 by ED50 and if we have a high therapeutic index that means that TD50 is larger than ED50 we would expect this drug to be more safe and example of these drugs are penicillins which are antibiotics these drugs have a high therapeutic index and hence they are safe drugs and if the therapeutic index is low we would expect the drug to have low safety okay and a very known example of these drugs are or is warfarin which is an anticoagulant drug and the toxicity of warfarin is or causes bleeding okay so we have to, to, to take care when we are dealing with warfarin especially in drug-drug interactions because any 
small increase in its concentration in blood would cause toxicity because of its low therapeutic index.